This is William Champion's home, built right slap in the middle of his industrial estate. Quite a grand building in his time, built around 1746 I believe. Quite grand in his time. With lovely gardens. And on the left there you can see the old, I think, what is the stable block. Used to have wind, apart from a windmill, he had horse mills as well. A famous poem was written by a lady. Can't remember the name of the poem, but apparently she wrote it in that balcony room which is up there, on the far right of the building. This was the old windmill where the smelting process used to begin. We used to crush the uh, metallic ores ready to go into the foundry. I had a big sail on it at one time. There were two of them, but I'm not sure where the other one was. Built out of pennant stone. This is quarried, I believe, in the Forest of Dean. I had the nickname of Babel's Tower because of all the non-nationals that used to work there. And nothing really changes. Massive structure. I'm walking the dog. Hello there. As you walk down to the front of the lawn, you've got Echo Pond. Long since dried out due to trees growing and breaking through the clay lining. There is a little bit of water left in there, inhabited by some frogs and the occasional moorhen. You stand out here and call out something, then Rumour has it you can hear it back, but I'm not going to do it because I'm on my own. And they might come out and get me in a white coat and about white van or something. Because Warmley House is now an old people's home. Down on the left hand side of Echo Pond is the old boathouse. Hard to imagine it was on the edge of a lake because it's now in the middle of a field stroke trailer park or teepee as it's locally known. Sinking slowly into the clay, the little window down there used to be the second floor window apparently. And well overgrown with ivy. That's elderflower. This there. is my favourite bit of the old estate, the checkered garden. You see the black clinker in the walls again, or black stone. A lot of that, or all of it, was used to, uh, to build the black castle down at Arnold's Fair. Have you ever seen that? This is a lovely little spot for a picnic. Another entrance to the grottoes there. This is the mound. Built entirely out of natural materials. 
for the purposes of getting a good view of the estate and also providing some screening for the house. And there's a holly bush there, which was there from the origins apparently. We're hoping to excavate it a little bit fuller, given the resources. Some nice oak trees on there now. This is the statue of Neptune, part of the estate, and unbelievably it was in the middle of the lake. Hard to believe because it's surrounded by fields now, and the caravan park. Also made out of the clinker waste from the smelting process. Sadly lost his arms and his trident. More of a Neptune de Milo at the moment. It was restored back in the 80s. But still in need of a little bit of TRC, I think. And if you pan around to the caravan park. In the 1750s, all underwater. And this little building here is Champion's Summer House Stroke Folly. Interesting in as much as it straddles the Sison Brook. One half being in the parish of Sison, or the old parish of Sison, and the other half being in the old parish of Bitten. It did have a sluice gate underneath it, originally. To control the ebb and flow of the waters into the lake. It's been extended over the years. But the central bit of the tower is the original building. Champion Summer House. Right, this is the old clock tower building. One of the last remaining buildings of the industrial site. There used to be a clock on all four sides of that tower, apparently. And it was where we used to make the pins. So the people in there coined the phrase working for pin money. Rumour has it. Then again, lots of the old black stone in there. I mean, it's been restored since his, uh, William Champion's time. But much of the same spec. So there we have it. A whistle stop tour of the Champion Estate. Lots more to see and find out. Come on down and have a little look. It's open bank holidays. The grounds are open all year long, but um, the grottos aren't always open. But they are on bank holidays.